Okay. I'm Professor Hung Kwoch. I'm from St. Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne, Australia and the University of Melbourne in Australia. I'm Cyril Conto. I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer at ICNOS Glenmark Innovation. The study of ISB 2001 uh, is a phase one study that's aimed to find the most optimal dose. To qualify for the study, patients must have to have had relapsed refractory multiple myeloma and have exhausted all available therapies, including the three uh, major drug class, immunomodulatory drugs, uh, proteasome inhibitors, and an anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody. The study is designed to look at nine dose level of ISB 2001 altogether. And thus far, we have completed exploring dose level 7 at 1,200 microgram per kilogram um, uh, and uh, in 20 patients. Uh, what was remarkable was that we, we started seeing responses at very low doses, at 50 microgram per kilogram at dose level 3. And amongst the patients who received uh, dose level 3 or more, uh, we saw a remarkable response rate of 83%. Uh, 73% of these patients achieved a very good partial response. That is a 90% reduction uh, in, in myeloma burden. Uh, about a quarter, 22% of these patients uh, receive, um, achieved a, a complete response. And even one patient achieved a minimal residual disease negativity, meaning the lack of cancer at very uh, low threshold. Um, what was remarkable was that the response was quite durable, some patients responding more than nine months. And more importantly, uh, even patients who have had uh, prior uh, bispecific antibodies and T um, uh, CAR T cells all, re all also responded to these agents. And amongst this group of patients, um, the response rate was 75%, which in my view is unprecedented. Um, the safety profile of this drug was quite um, favourable in that there was no uh, side effects leading to death uh, and no side effects uh, leading to discontinuation of the drug. Uh, what is important is that the severe infections, the grade 3 infection, was remarkably low. Uh, it occurred only in three patients, which again is quite unexpected for this type of uh, therapy. Uh, cytokine release syndrome, which is a, a common side effect with these types of immune therapy, uh, occurred in 75% of our patients, uh, but the majority was mild, grade 1. Uh, only two patients reported um, a moderate or grade 2 cytokine release syndrome, um, but one was doubtful because it, it occurred unusually late and it coincided with the uh, COVID-19 infection. And, and, this, and the cytokine release syndrome was quite easily manageable with dexamethasone and tocilizumab, which is the common treatment we would use for these type of, of, of um, reactions, but only half of the patients needed it. And so uh, overall, the preliminary results that we have here for ISB 2001 is amongst the most promising I've seen in such a heavily pre-treated group of patients. And I think that uh, ISB 2001 has the power to transform uh, the treatment landscape of uh, patients with multiple myeloma who've exhausted uh, therapies in the immediate future. So it's, it, it's exciting times for all of us. Remarkably, there was no one signal for any side effects. We had a lot of, 100% of patients had at least one adverse event. But the side effects were mild, there was no specific signal, and it was difficult to attribute causality to the drug because people with myeloma have these side effects anyway. So, in fact, that was one of the surprising features, yes. wasn't it? it was, um, it's the, the outcome of the rational design of the molecule. We had it as a combiner to increase the specificity towards the myeloma cells to avoid any uh, off-tumor uh, side effects. And uh, also, we, with the second binder, we have a tighter bind of the T cells to the myeloma cells, that, which prevents systemic effect of cytokines or other side effects. So really, th this molecule was designed to deliver activity in, in a heavily set of uh, pretreated uh, patients and, uh, and to minimize the toxicity. Remarkably, uh over half of patients have had prior anti-CD30 targeted therapy. And to Cyril's point just now, um, the molecule is designed such that it binds to a different location of CD38 compared to the traditional monoclonal antibodies like isotuximab or daratumumab. So just to give you a bit of perspective, normally when we give people uh, 
the anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies and we have to give them another drug that targets uh, 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 the same uh, CD38, we will have to wait for six months for the daratumumab or the isotuximab to be washed away so that the new drug has have targets to bind. In this situation, there were six patients who had who progressed on daratumumab or isotuximab within the last six months. A hundred percent, all six of six patients responded to ISB two double zero one. So therefore, that is clinical proof that the two targets, are, uh, the two binding sites, do not overlap, and you can use one drug uh, after the other immediately without waiting for for the wash up period. Again, the outcome of the collaboration between research and clinic, we designed this binder to specifically target a different one than daratumumab or isatuximab to enable immediate treatment for the clinicians and avoid any gap in therapy for the patients. A professor Quash and the team of investigators will continue, complete the dose escalation, uh, which will take us to January, February. Then we are preparing the dose expansion courts. We need to make sure that the uh, phase two dose is the right one. So we are going to test several phase two doses and an optimal scheduling. We also notice that this large molecule has a long half-life in patients. It's preliminary results, but at the moment, we believe that there is at least 10 days of half-life, which should enable um, less frequent dosing for the patient. It's already administered subcutaneously. If we can have a, a maintenance treatment with three weekly or monthly uh, monthly frequency for the patient. I think we would do also we would help to prevent exhaustion of the T cells, and um, and that will be run in the in 2025. And if the we will also discuss those results with the health authorities to see whether this molecule meets some criteria to accelerate the development, and hopefully run into uh, our first registrational trial with this asset in 2026. The patients who progress on T-cell engagers or CAR T-cells presently have very poor prognosis. And in this space, there is a gap of unmet need. There's nothing available. And I believe that uh, for the first time, we now have life after bispecific antibodies or CAR T-cells. Uh, and I think that it's early days, we have to wait for uh, durability of response, so more data is coming out. Um, I would encourage that if patients want to get involved, uh, perhaps look at your uh, the information you have in your respective countries to see which centre runs the clinical trial and if you think that you fit that criteria. And uh, at this stage, we're only needing patients who uh, have had uh, at least three prior lines of therapy and have seen the three major drug classes Imids, protosome inhibitors, and anti CD38. Uh, and if you think you fit that criteria, contact your specialist, get a referral, and uh, at least I can speak for Australia that all of us uh, will be very keen to meet you and assess you, and we go from there. Likewise, from the sponsor, if you have any question, we have our contact us webpage on iginnovate.com. We'll be more than happy to direct the patients to the proper center. Okay.